Right, OK. Before we look at this wonderful film life story about the discovery of the double helix, I just thought I'd mention this, as not many people know this. The MRES group now know because we had chapter and verse about it yesterday. But not many people know that Nottingham played a crucial role in the discovery of the double helix in 1953. Strangely enough, it was just a few weeks after King George VI died. So in a sense, this is quite a coincidence because now we're talking about this just two or three weeks after Queen Elizabeth died. I think uh, George VI died on February the 6th and the discovery was made something like the 28th of February in 1953. That's the date that Crick and Watson rushed into the Eagle announcing that they'd done it. They'd found the, the secret of, of life. But uh, six years before that, in 1947, uh, this paper was published uh, by three scientists from the then University College Nottingham. University College Nottingham because the university hadn't got its Royal Charter yet, so it was still an external college of the University of London in terms of the degrees which it awarded. And this is a paper by uh, Creeth, Gulland and Jordan reporting or proving the existence of hydrogen bonds in DNA. And the definitive experiment was done using a viscometer, an instrument for measuring viscosity, which is a measure of the resistance to flow, because DNA solutions have a very high viscosity compared to protein solutions of the same uh, concentration. Highly purified DNA, carthymus DNA was used, whose purity was checked by a technique known as analytical autosonification. Creeth was a PhD student on this, and Gulland and Jordan were his supervisors. And what this diagram shows from their paper is that by exposing the DNA solution to conditions of either high alkali or high acid, the viscosity drops uh, remarkably. And this drop at both high and low pH is a diagnostic of the existence of hydrogen bonds being titrated out. OK, now I learned about this story. Here we go. I learned about this story. There's Mike Creeth, uh, because Mike was my postdoc supervisor, not here, but whilst I was a postdoc at the University of, uh, of, 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 of Bristol. I was working with him at the time on mucins or mucus like proteins. And in the tea room, he told us of the story of what he did as a PhD student here. I say here, it was in the chemistry department in the Trent building of the university. And if you want to find the exact place it was, it was on the top floor and at the northwest corner of the, the building. This is where the old chemistry nucleic acid labs used to be. Now, so they published the study in 1947. Creeth sketched his own model of what he thought the DNA structure, the DNA molecule uh, would look like. So he had uh, two chains with the uh, sugar phosphate backbone on the outside and the bases on the inside like this. And although he wasn't allowed to publish this because the supervisors thought it was too speculative, this diagram nonetheless appears in his PhD thesis in the margins of one of the, uh, the pages. And then we did a little reconstruction ourselves. We bought a standard DNA kit, but didn't build it quite in the way that they had instructed uh, the manufacturers, but we built the, the Creeth model instead. And that is on display in the uh, National Center for Macromolecular Hydrodynamics, the NCMH in the Lions Building, alongside the, uh, the Watson and Crick uh, structure. And this was quite a good attempt really by Creeth, and it's almost right, apart from the the breaks in the uh, in the chains and the absence, of course, 
of uh, helix because in 1947 there was no access to the x-ray diffraction data of Rosalind Franklin. Of course the base pairing uh, he didn't know uh, which base pair with which because the Shargraph rules were not available until 1952, you know the equivalence of A to C, C to G. So he didn't know which bases, he didn't know which bases paired with, uh, with which, he just had uh, bases uh, paired uh, together. Now 2017 marked the 70th anniversary of the uh, discovery of hydrogen bonds in, in DNA. And we had a meeting of the Biochemical Society and the Royal Society of Chemistry in November 2017 in the Trent Building to celebrate this. And uh, we published a paper in Biochemical Society Transactions to mark that. And the text uh, which accompanies this recording, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give the link uh, to, uh, to this. Now, there's also an interesting epilogue to all this, it's quite nice really. You might recognize uh, this guy here. It's Owen Epps who works in the Mulberry Cafe Bar. He's quite friendly with one or two of our guys in the NCMH, uh, Vlad and Jacob, and they got him or commissioned him. It was my birthday actually, uh, but they got him to paint this artist's impression uh, of the Cleef model. And you can see it's turned out to be rather beautiful. Uh, this picture was taken in the, the corridor of the NCMH where the, the models are located. And uh, we're thinking of a date when we can properly uh, launch uh, this painting. And we think an appropriate date would be the next DNA day, which is 25th of April. Maybe next April we can have the official day uh, for this and give Owen the recognition he uh, deserves. But before then, this picture is about to come out in the university's uh, uh, AgriMag uh, magazine, so uh, look out for it. But I think this is a nice epilogue uh, to the Nottingham story. And if you want to follow this up, I've given uh, links in the, uh, in the text box to the Biochemical Society Transactions uh, paper from 2017. Uh, There's this broadcast uh, we did uh, on DNA Day, 25th of, uh, of April uh, 2019, with uh, International DNA Day with uh, Radio BBC Radio Nottingham. And also, we've given a link to the uh, the public uh, lecture we gave at the physics department as part of the university's. Uh, public uh, outreach uh, series, which was uh, in the evening of that uh, day. So uh, with that, we will close the recording and now we'll switch over to the film. So if you're watching this uh, online or a recording of this, it's the uh, the first link in the, uh, the text or, or chat, which uh, accompanies uh, this uh, Teams or YouTube. Uh, recording. OK, thanks a lot. Let's uh, enjoy the. Uh, the life story film uh, now. Uh, thank you.